Hey there, and welcome to the fourth module of our MOOC, Microbiome and Health. Today I would like to introduce you to the human microbiome. Did you know that you share about 80 million bacteria with one kiss? Did you know that physical exercise increases the diversity of your microbiome and thereby reduces inflammation? Did you know that kids that grew up in close contact to animals such as dogs and cows have less risk to develop chronic diseases due to the microbiome they are exposed to? Did you know that there is a microbiota gut-brain and gut-lung axis, meaning that you can deduce mental illness like anexia or depression, as well as respiratory tract diseases to your gut microbiome? Did you know that already 1000 years ago Chinese medicine advised fecal transplantation from a healthy individual to a deceased one and that this treatment is highly promising nowadays to treat gut diseases? So the list of such stunning facts about the human microbiome is exploding. In this presentation we did our best to pack the most important into a few minutes. So let's start. Fact number one. Our entire body is colonized by microorganisms. Our body consists of very diverse habitats where different metabolic conditions prevail and all of them are colonized by specific microbial communities. Overall, we are home to 10 to 100 trillion microbes, which is similar to the number of your entire human cells. More than 10,000 different microbial species are associated to our body and the genes of our microbiome outnumber our own human genome by about 100 to 1. Our gut microbiome can weigh up to 2 kilograms, which is similar to the weight of your brain. And it is suggested that 90% of all our diseases are somehow related to the health of our microbiome. However, fact number two, the microbiome is personalized. The genome of all humans is 99.9% .9 identical. Our gut microbiome instead differs up to 90% between individual humans. So each one of us harbors a unique microbial composition. This we know since the late 1990s, where the gut microbiome of thousands of individuals was sequenced and described. Fact number three. The microbiome develops via horizontal and vertical transmission and is a dynamic process. Horizontal transmission describes the microbial colonization from the environment. Environmental determinants are for example diet, but also the place of living or whether you grew up with siblings or pets or not. Stress, physical activity and social interactions play a huge role in this dynamic process as well. Vertical transmission occurs during birth, where your microbes from the mother's lower intestinal tract and the vagina are donated to the newborn. Speaking about birth, fact number four. The microbiome is largely determined by the mode of delivery. During birth, your mother transfers a huge quantity of her beneficial microbes to you. Thus, the microbiome of vaginally delivered babies develops differently than the microbiome of cesarean delivered newborns. Also with her milk, your mother promotes your growth, but also the growth of your beneficial microbiota. Accordingly, breastfed babies have a different microbiome than formula-fed babies. But we will discuss this in more detail in our next chapter, where you will learn to understand the development of your own microbiome. Fact number five. Our microbiome keeps us healthy. It protects us from pathogens and trains our immune system. So first of all, the microbiome acts as a barrier to protect us from the invasion of pathogenic microorganisms. Studies on germ-free animals showed us that the biological system, which is free of its natural microbiota, is highly vulnerable to invasion of pathogens and thus to disease development. Naturally, the higher the diversity of your microbiome, the stronger the barrier effect against different pathogens. Next, our microbiome is necessary to develop a healthy immune system. Being exposed to very different microbes as well as infectious agents and parasites throughout our lifespan helps the immune system to differentiate between beneficial, neutral and pathogenic microorganisms, thereby maturating to a highly efficient system. This exposure is of particular importance during the early childhood, which has also been linked to the so-called hygiene hypothesis. This hypothesis states that a lack of exposure to microorganisms suppresses the natural development of a healthy immune system. In turn, if the immune system is not trained by microbial exposure, it can also target non-pathogenic substances. Food allergies might develop from this. In worst case, 
your immune system will mistake your own cells as hazardous, which can result in an autoimmune disease. Fact number six. The gut microbiome is imperative for efficient food digestion. So during digestion, our gut microbes provides us with nutrients, which we could simply not metabolize from our diet on our own. Microbes convert, for example, complex plant fibers to metabolites, which we can use as energy source. They also provide us vitamins such as B12 and K. We can even shape our microbiome with the food we may or may not provide. To give you an example, if you consume mainly processed food and no fresh vegetables and fruits, you will likely lose the microbes that are able to convert plant fibers into the metabolites your body requires. Fact number seven. A healthy life is determined by a healthy microbiome and vice versa. This applies not only for a healthy diet, but the overall lifestyle. You should keep in mind that the human microbiome symbiosis is mutually influential. This means, despite our microbes keep us healthy, they also strongly respond to an unhealthy lifestyle, including again diet, but also drug intake, stress, low physical activity and many other factors. In extreme cases, such factors can lead to a disturbance of the microbial balance, a so-called dysbiosis, which can result in disease. So the last fact is meant to emphasize on the importance of the microbiome. Fact number eight, humans and their microbiota formed an evolutionary symbiosis. So how can we know that? Our body produces substances solely to nurture specific microorganisms. Examples are the mucus of our gut, of which we produce around 10 liters a day, and oligosaccharides in human milk. Both the mucus and the human milk consist of the same molecules, which you can rarely find outside of the human body. And only few bacteria are able to digest these metabolites, but these few are known as the most beneficial for our health. And again, only our body produces their food. So to sum this first chapter up, our entire body is colonized by microorganisms, and without them we would simply not survive, as they protect us from diseases, train our immune system and support us with, us with nutrients. Our microbes are our closest companions throughout our lifetime, and they respond to our lifestyle, positively and negatively. But fortunately, our microbiome is most of the time quite forgivenly, meaning that with some effort, we can bring our microbiome from a dysbiosis also back to a healthy state. In the next chapter, you will learn to understand your own microbiome. See you there.